Let's go, you two. Life's too short to spend in bed. Dad, we'll meet you after breakfast. No way, big guy. You two are gonna need a big breakfast. Looks to me like you two got 30 feet of driveway to shovel. Oh, brother. What's the matter, Larry? You're a young, healthy guy. <laughs> Up and at him. Uh, I can't just yet, sir. You know what I mean? Oh, hey, hey, you got a little stiffy? <laughs> you young guys. <laughs> Welcome to the ah, ah! Doom, Doom Show. Ah! I am Richard. I'm joined with the original American Screamer, frickin' Jeffrey. Hello. Greetings, Richard, from a small, snowy town in the heartland of America. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, so, folks, before we even get started, we're not talking about the American Scream from 2012, the documentary about haunted houses. Good film. We are, good, good film. I do, I do indeed enjoy that. A lot well. of, a lot of, a lot of very sort of hopeless uh, older men just w- hey. whiling their days away. I, I can, hey. I can feel it. Yeah, we know our kind, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wasn't no, <laughs> no critique. Just, just observation. <laughs> we meet twice a month. So. <laughs> The uh, American Scream, 1988, directed by Mitchell Linden, uh, the creator and uh, auteur of this. <laughs> yeah, that's that's about it. <laughs> uh, he did do a little bit of um, camera and, and gr- well, grip work, actually, yep. on things like Lone Star and the Beverly Hillbillies. And the uh, <laughs> the Red Hot Chili Peppers <laughs> Under the Bridge music video. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I don't have a pop, pop, whatever the fuck. That <laughs> nice. So, yeah, an interesting career. That's I what remember, he went to after this, too. Which is I funny. remember when that music video debuted on MTV, and it was such a huge deal. <laughs> <laughs> then we all died. All of us. We screamed like Americans and died. Uh, this was written by Mr. Linden and someone named Phil Hopper. Uh, Phil Hopper was also one of the... Uh, no, he wasn't one of the producers. Sorry. Um, he was the cameraman on Kamikaze Hearts. Do, do you actually know that one? No, it no. looks interesting. Okay. Is it a punk rock movie? It looks it, yeah. Looks it. Mm. Tough and cynical veteran Mitch and her more naive yet eager partner Tigger are a couple of porn actresses involved in an intense lesbian relationship. Hmm. Doesn't sound punk. Sounds more excitement. Ooh. Kamikaze Hearts, the Jeffrey and Richard story. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I just laughed for no reason. I, I guess I didn't have an out. I had no <laughs> out there. I outed myself. Uh, this was shot by Brian England, father of uh, Robert England. Really? No, no. no. Uh, cinematographer, this dude, he shot a lot of stuff. Like Friday the 13th, Part 8. The Supernaturals. Uh, okay. Gate 2. 
Uh, my mom's a werewolf. Oh, I Madman Man. Yeah. I Madman Man. I Madman Secret <laughs> Christmas movie. Is it really? Ooh. Yep. Uh, you, it's like one of those blink and you'll miss it things. Like towards the end of the movie, they just run into like a library or a city hall or something, and there's just Christmas trees everywhere, and you're like, "What?" Oh, did you mention uh, cheerleader camp? Here? No, I was about to. Big one, yeah. Uh, that one and uh, and Larry Cohen's uh, Wicked Stepmother. Yes, with uh, Betty Davis and Colleen Camp. Ooh. Oh my God, I love Colleen Camp. Yep, Always. I have a copy of that somewhere. I need to watch that sometime. Mm -hmm. I have not seen it. I just love Colleen Camp's face in the freaking IMDb pictures. Just her like shocked face. <laughs> Such a cutie. Ugh. Indeed. So anyway, I found uh, no trailer for this, but I did find a VHS for this bad boy. And no, I don't own it, but the internet owns it. It's very hard to find. I've found no live listings for it anywhere. Wow. Well, it was put on. It was put out on Innovid. <laughs> excuse me, Z Innovid, uh, a division of Twenty First Century Genesis Home Video Incorporated, uh, which put out things like uh, the Milpitas Monster and Bloodbath, that one with uh, uh, Carol Baker and uh, Dennis Hopper. Just weird, at all. just weird stuff. Weird yes. stuff. Ooh, they put out something called Demon Lust. Hmm. I want to know more. Tell I want me to more. Know more. <laughs> Let's see, Demon Lust. Show me the picture. Uh oh, I think I broke. I think I broke the internet. <laughs> hold on, hold on. This might be worth it. Oh my god, the cover is hilarious. Just a guy peeping. It's Brink Stevens, so you know it's quality. Makeup FX wizard Tom Savini. Okay. It looks like a big pile of dog shit. Mm. But it was also put out by Video Outlaw. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I've gone to very uninteresting places with this research. <laughs> Snore. Anyway, the American Scream VHS, uh, <laughs> the tagline is, It's a tradition. And here's the plot. <laughs> That's a question, though. What is the tradition that we Fuck. are witnessing here? Yes, we will definitely have the answers later. Not on this episode. <laughs> here's, the, here's the plot on the back. Everybody's average family, two unmanageable teens, a stress-riddled, bumbling father, and his ever-present, well, of course she's there, whining wife, meet the Benzigers. <laughs> They think they're taking a trouble-free trip to a mountain resort, dot, dot, think again. This winter, Wonderland is a perfect setting for the evil rituals and unorthodox traditions that take place. This is no holiday. It's holy hell and no one has a prayer. <laughs> a bloody transformation of roles turns the tortured teens into adults themselves. Spoiler, some kids would kill to be adults. These kids may have to. Wow. Um, so that's the back of the VHS tape? Yes, sir. Innovid. Because okay. <laughs> that's the only thing on eBay with regards to this movie is a um, original 1989 trade print ad promo. Which oh, has, nice. <laughs> has basically the same, uh, the same blurb on the back of it. Suggested real t retail price, $59.95. Oh, yeah. Wow. I'm actually looking in the uh, the reviews to see if anybody who worked on it like was like, "Hey, I worked on this." <laughs> yeah, sometimes you get that with uh, with these ones. No, no, just awesome reviews. Good the, job, everybody. The poster art is so great, and this trade ad is telling me that uh, that a uh, a theatrical size poster is available. <laughs> um, it's so good. I really want it it makes it look like like the kids are trying to murder their parents yes which is not at all what the movie's about but but they're just like sort of shrugging like it's a living or it's, no, it's a tradition it's got a national lampoons look to it which oh, yeah. i think may have been one of the half inspirations i mean i don't want to get into 100%. too much yeah yeah I, I wrote down a lot of inspirations for what like, who the fuck is responsible for this? Like, the car sing-along is very much trying to be National Lampoon's Nightmare Vacation. Like, Oh, my God. Right from yes. the start, for sure. 
the grossly comedic tone at points. The tone <laughs> of this thing is all over the place. Oh boy. We're going to talk about that. <sighs> uh, the movie starts with some nice, long, drawn-out credits to eat up runtime. <laughs> this is an 85-minute movie, and they are milking it with the freaking credits. It goes on forever. Well, the uh, music here is done by a man named Richard Cox, and uh, this <laughs> opening title theme kind of sounds like a drunken, sleepy Law & Order theme. That's kind of what I said. I yeah. said it was tv medical drama music <laughs> yes but but again sleepy and um it had a few too many did you see what else uh, the music richard cox did no he was the composer on slumber party massacre 2 wow i, I mean yeah. granted i don't really remember much of the actual score from that because the soundtrack is so good <laughs> uh um, ditto <laughs> yeah but good work good work coxie i'm up I'm way overdue for a rewatch of that. I haven't seen that since my first time. Oh my god, I love that. You've movie. only seen that once? Yep. Just Holy that once shit. and it blew my fucking mind. Yeah, it's the best. I loved it. It's so good. So we cut to uh <laughs> Well, let's talk about the can we talk about some of the cast a little yeah, bit? Yeah, yeah, let's it'll help us stay sorted out <sighs> as we're discussing this shit. Yeah. Let's start with good old Ben Benziger. Ben Hansmar. Yes. The father. So he's an actor. Yes. 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 He's surprisingly, in surprisingly, I really thought when I clicked on his credits, it was going to be a lot longer. He seems like one of those character actors that would just work a lot doing weird shit. Like he didn't even know it was him, but no, he didn't really work that much. More of a. I mean, his um, best role is clearly uh, the puppet performance of Theodore Rex in the film Theodore Rex. Is that the Whoopi Goldberg? Oh, geez. you bet it was. You bet it I've was. I've never seen that. The I most know expensive it. straight-to-video movie ever made because Holy it was crap. deemed de- <laughs> it was deemed inappropriate to be released in theaters because it was such a disaster. <sighs> so he also use... did a lot of the the puppet performances in Dinosaurs, the TV series. Oh wow, this is so cool. Anyway, was sorry. he was he not the mama? <laughs> he was Fran Sinclair, which I think is the mama. <laughs> God, they made it look like him too. Yeah, so he played. The like mama. if you look at the character, it sort of looks like the actor. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, well, he sort of look, he's got like a Matt oh, Frewer vibe. Matt you know, like, Matt Frewer, Max Headroom. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He looks a bit like that. Um, yeah, not in much, unfortunately. But he does. He does. He he looks it. He, he looks mm-hmm. like somebody you've seen a lot. You're absolutely but he right. plays the dad, the the bumbling dad. Uh, he's really charming in this. I when he's like, oh, fiddlesticks. Well, he does that. He's very like old fashioned, like fifties dad. But then he also tries to keep up with the cool kid lingo, <laughs> and he just embarrasses himself. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Oh boy, I love him. Uh, we got Jennifer Darling who plays his his lovely wife Barbara. <laughs> and when you click on her, her IMDb profile just has a giant CGI Garfield with his oh hands God. splayed open. This is a voice uh, actress now. Her her man, she liked to work. Uh yeah, before wow. she was a voice actress, she played Peggy Callahan in The Bionic Woman and uh, 6 million dollar man. Uh, but anime fans will recognize her because she did a voice. Whatever anime you've been watching, she did a voice. She's all over the place. Uh, she's in so much. Yeah. Holy crap. Some Disney stuff too. Yeah, yeah she's she's she works. But let's go back. Let's rewind before the voice acting. Let's have a look. See here. Oh my God, she's almost always done voices. This is yeah. hilarious. Oh, there's, so, there's so much. 159 credits. Wow. Good for her. Yeah. She probably retired. Yeah. She's like, I gotta go. Thanks. Wow. Well, good for her. I mean, she she really knocked it out of the park in this one. <laughs> So p- playing the role of Brent Benzinger is Matt Boring Guy. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Boring Guy. How dare you? Mm. Oh, uh, this guy's pretty prolific actor as well. Fifty six credits. Uh, this launched his career. Wow. All or special. rather, he he kept working. <laughs> yes. Well, no, he was in Cannibal Hookers as well. Ooh. And uh, and the Dream Child. Oh, shit. Man, that Cannibal Hookers box art is hilarious. It's mm. just a butt. <laughs> I will dance on your grave. Look at my butt. 
No, really, I toned it from all the dancing. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, lots of TV work. Oh my God, so yeah. much TV work. Yeah, almost exclusively. But still working. Days in the of day. our lives. Days of our lives and the bold and the beautiful. Hello. Yeah, he's recently in the Cobra Kai series. He's going to be in oh, the boy. Star Girl series. So he's still working. Good for him. Man, Cobra Kai, man. I don't know. I've never seen it. Um, the sister. So here's a, here's a problem I have. So there are other, that's, that's our, uh, well, that's three fourths of our core family. Yes. Then we have Bridget Benzinger, who is the daughter. Yep. Riley Weston. Yes. Now here's the thing. I often, I couldn't really keep her or her friend clear in my mind because they look pretty similar. Like they both have brunette hair. Is she the one who's flirting with the sheriff throughout the movie? Um, or is that no? That's Roxanne. That's Roxanne. Okay, yeah. so she's flirting. Well, not she's. Yeah, okay, she's the other one. Okay. She ends up with the 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 freaking uh, redneck dude. Yeah, I named him a uh, greasy McSweat. I think. <laughs> I think his name is. I wrote down his actual name. Greasy McSweat. His real name is. Oh, Wilbur, maybe. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. That sounds right. So Riley Weston, is she in anything? No, not, not really. really. Uh, more TV stuff. Yeah. Some uh, some indie films. But she's yeah. still working. Still one working. one episode of Erie, Indiana, as oh, girl number one. That's all you need, right there. Classic. Well, he, he made it. Yeah. Now we got to the 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 friend of the families. The friends. We got two friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, Larry, who is my favorite character in any film ever. Um, I really thought I was going to hate this character, and then he won me over. He's another one who seems like he's in things, but he's not. No, like, he's, he's actually not at all. Um, he's an, a, a fight announcer in Teen Wolf 2. <laughs> and he did some stunts in Alligator 2. Uh, Good for him. But yeah, he really he has one of those like faces that seems like you should have been blown up in the, in the yeah. 80s. But maybe he yeah. just wasn't of age at the right point. I like when she, he's described as demented in the movie. <laughs> yeah, that sounds uh, right. Jean, uh, Jean Sapienza is Roxanne. She's the friend. Mm-hmm. Again, did, did not work a lot. She's I, almost interchangeable for a long time in the movie. She and Bridget are interchangeable. Yeah. I and then they start to kind of grow into themselves and become, you know, people. But it takes a yeah. while. The the most famous member of this cast is uh, our man and yours, George Buckflower. Wowie wow wow! I never get tired of this guy ever. <laughs> He's great in Berserk, man. I, I saw Berserk for the first time. Berserker. Ber- I'm yeah, sorry, Berserker. Yeah, Berserker. And he is so good in that. Like he's, <laughs> he's not so corny. Good. He's just he's silly. But he's very he like is. wry. Yeah, Ryan, yeah. unintelligible. Yeah, but dude, no, oh my God, he's so amazing. <laughs> 160 credits before he passed away. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> he passed away in 2004, and he's he showed up in a movie in 2018. So I think yeah. they found some archival footage to <laughs> sneak into a movie. Well, I would guess that that was just a film that took forever to complete. Oh. You know? uh, it is that dames and likely. dreams. Yeah. Uh, uh. That's how Canada works. They they bury something in the snow for 14 years, bring it out and finish it. Yeah, it's like a natural time capsule. Yeah. <laughs> Man, he's oh, so good. So uh, I mean, anybody else? I mean, that's like our, our important cast. There is <clears throat> the pastor who's pretty notable. Oh, um, yes. Played by Blackie Dammit, which is Blackie a great Blackie Dammit. Blackie Dammit. I, w- I described him in my notes as being like if Buster Poindexter was cosplaying as The Undertaker. <laughs> oh, wait, are you talking about? Yeah, Blackie Dammit was, what was his, what was his character? He was the pastor. pastor? Yeah, the, ban- the man in black. Looks like The Undertaker. See, I didn't know he was supposed to be pastor. Oh, yeah. He's in the church. Uh. He like tries to kill Larry in the church. No, no, I know, I know the character, but like, I, I just thought he was like just the man in black because I was gonna. Oh yeah, I was gonna say he's obviously affiliated with the Thorn people mm. from no, the, this... from the, the the Halloween movies. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nah, too too deep. Nope, not deep enough. Mm. Yeah, I think those are the big ones. Those are the biggies. 
There's some other people, but smaller importance. I mean, this what? movie's going to take us for a for a ride. Oh boy! So let's get into it. So we get introduced to the family as they're preparing to go to this uh, this vacation destination. Uh, but before we can get going, we have to have some wacky shenanigans. Well, actually, I didn't realize that they had won like a uh, th- this was a contest that they'd won or something. Apparently, yeah, that's what the back of the box said, but I didn't yeah. catch that in any of the dialogue. Well, the, the 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 what do you call it? The brochure they look at like promises them like. Uh, an easy, fun time, getting away from their problems, whatever. Which oh, is weird, because where they are preparing to go does not seem to be a place that is, like, a tourist destination at all. No. <laughs> like, it's just a, a small town with, like, yeah. a diner and a polka hall. Like a logging town, and that's all yeah. there is to do in the whole town. Right, it's not even like it's a, oh, well, we've got skiing up there for the, the rich people, and we're just <laughs> the townies down below. No, not really. It's just <laughs> small town America. Uh, Brant is uh, interrupted by Larry, his friend, because he's spying on the, uh, the lady across the way, the lady with huge hair. I believe who, her name is Mrs. Gleason. <laughs> she has sex with the mailman every day, according to Brant. <laughs> Rain, sleet, or snow. They're doing it. And uh, this mailman is disgusting. <laughs> he is. He's a male porn star. (laughs) I mean, come on. Get it? Male? (sighs) Yeah, I gotcha. Postman? How hard would it have been for them to just cast someone who was like a a handsome hunk of a mailman? No, this is like this greasy mustachioed... You you were unavailable, my friend. Yeah, I guess I was that day. (laughs) (laughs) So Brant the Rocker, uh, as I wrote him in my notes... Uh, he's wearing a t-shirt that is homemade that says, Octung Kmart Shoppers. <laughs> That's actually awesome. <laughs> Fucking blew my mind when I read it. I was like, what? <laughs> he uh, also has a uh, a cardboard standee of Mel Gibson as the Road Warrior. Yes! Yeah. He's, he's cool. That's it. <laughs> the That's room his is whole so bare. aesthetic, yeah. <laughs> well, Larry helps him out by stealing his, uh, he checks the mail uh, for the Benzigers and actually steals, steals his, his report, report card, card. Yeah, yeah, to, to yeah. help him out. <laughs> apparently it's bad. But you know what? Go ahead and give them the freaking bad report card. Do it. Because <laughs> these, pa- these parents are way too sweet. Uh, Lietta called them a pair of Who's from Whoville. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> they look at like without even the the makeup, like the prosthetics. Yes. Wow, Let's just cast yeah. him in the fucking <laughs> Damn. Oh, boy. Um, Larry also gets a glimpse up, uh, an accidental but then a happy glimpse up uh, somebody's long I'm guessing Roxanne? T-shirt. Maybe yeah. Roxanne? I Maybe. don't know. I this don't is... know. They look identical. <laughs> Dude, they... I, you know, I hate when people are like that, when they're like, Dude, I, I couldn't tell who anybody was in the movie. And I'm like, well, just pay attention. People, I was paying attention. Yeah. I was writing freaking page of notes here, trying to figure out who who's who. I mean, if they're standing Whoville. side by side, I can tell which one is different. But yeah. at this at this quality and with that big a hair, I just can't oh, yes. tell. I can't tell. Uh, vinegar syndrome. If you're <laughs> listening, I know you're not. Because you guys have self respect. If you have a movie like this called The American Scream from 1988, and you want to release it, you should, because this should look better. This one of the things that added to when I messaged you, which I'll talk about at the end, part of my pain was watching this shitty copy. Because, mm. it, it, trust me, I've seen some bootlegs in my time, y'all, but this was uh, this was just hard to watch, especially as the tape got worse as we went along. Yeah. I mean, I think it's important to to mention the tone here at the beginning, yep. where it feels straight up like a, you know, like a like a sex comedy, or because the parents are there, you know, sort of like that National Lampoon vacation type vibe. I mean, we have we have boobs six minutes in, uh, with yep. uh, Miss Gleason. Yep. Um, and it it seems like it's going to take that that sort of goofy. Uh, a raucous, sexy time tone. And it does for a little bit longer until <laughs> basically we hit the road. And then yes. it gets... And then like the, the comedy, which has been of a certain type up until this point, goes very different direction. So no. this is first noticeable when they're driving along. 
and they see a hitchhiker on the side of the road. And uh, they're like, well, should we stop? I don't know. And then one of them, I, I'm not sure, it's either the dad or the mom says, who knows what kind of clown is out there? And it's and literally? Then, yeah, we cut and it's literally a hitchhiking clown <laughs> with a sign that says, the joke's on you. And the characters actually read the sign and they say, oh, the joke's on you. <laughs> What's that mm. mean? We don't know because it cuts. And then we go to the sing-along where they're singing... I don't even remember what they're bottles saying. of beer on the wall. Oh, yeah, bottles of beer. So it goes back to like that National Lampoon type humor after it had just been very surreal. Yeah, and then it gets surreal, horrific. Oh my lord! In the next scene, where they are peeping, so the the kids are all sitting in the back of the car, and I, they're not, they don't have like seat belts on, do they? <laughs> No, sir. Yeah, it seems it seems bad. Um, and they are looking into the front window of the car behind them, which has a woman who is breastfeeding an infant or trying to because the driver, who is a creepy man, is trying to fondle her and then suckle on her as well. Yeah, he but, wants some of what the baby's getting. Exactly. And she does not want that. So no. she is fighting back against him. And then, you know, all this is happening while he's driving the car. And then for reasons we don't understand, the <laughs> the front windshield is just sprayed with blood. <laughs> and the kids are all watching this and they go like, ah, and then it cuts to them rolling into town. Oh, my God. <laughs> There's so no weird. follow up. No and the follow up. The tone never recovers. Like, the tone problems just continue through the whole movie. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't call them a bug. I'd call them a feature. <laughs> yes. the uh, I do want to mention and just play a little sample of the weird song. They play this, like, weird rockin' song that I cannot, I could not understand the lyrics no matter how much I tried to stare at the TV and listen. So I'll play a little bit of this weird, it's the only song in the movie that isn't, uh, that has lyrics other than one later, which it's just, it's, they're not even worth mentioning, but I just, the song just added to my confusion. I don't know. Close the Uh, they arrive at their destination. Uh, mom hilariously has a complete <laughs> meltdown. And I'm like, oh, what is this going to be? What is her problem? And the thing is, she's so impressed and happy <laughs> by what so they found at this shitty little town. It's so good. Yeah, she's just weeping. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's real America. And sometimes it's just a sensual overload. Oh, my God. We've, been, we've all been there. Um, the, there is a little bit of foreboding here as well. Uh, the, the townsfolk very unmenacingly are waving at them as they roll in. And uh, one of the kids says, I feel like we're expected. Dun, dun, dun. They are. Kind they are. of. I guess. Sort of. Yeah. <laughs> oh, real quick. I, I was just look, glancing at the postman. The guy who plays the sexy postman that you found so attractive in this movie. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's Joe Charbonic. He is a director and uh, occasional actor and producer of things, but he directed The Watcher, the Keanu Reeves serial oh, killer movie. Jesus. Now I don't feel bad for calling him repulsive. <laughs> Marissa Tomei and James Spader. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I have never okay. seen that. I have seen it. I saw it back when it came out on video. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing, and I definitely rented it. I had never before stopped watching a movie and been and then like returned it before I'd finished it. <laughs> but that was the first time. It it'll go down in my memory as that. <laughs> now you're encouraging me to watch it. Oh. Uh, so we go to the diner in town, the the weird diner full of old weirdos. Yep. And that's when we see uh, good old uh, George Buckflower arguing with the waitress who doesn't want to give him any more cholesterol. Mm -hmm. And doesn't want to give children coffee either. Oh my god. They want to give, they want to give uh, hot chocolate. Hot chocky. Mm -hmm. Which honestly, I would not fight that hard. I'd be like, okay, I would just pour some of my mom's coffee into my hot chocolate and I'll be good to go. So this scene is going to get really crazy in a moment. But before that, Whew. there's a line, there's a dialogue exchange between Brent and Larry, which is insane. 
Yep. And I, I need you to help me figure it out because I, I, I decided not to go back and try to like figure out the context. I would just quiz you. Okay. Um, so Brent says, quote, smells so good my nose is getting erect. And Larry <laughs> says, come on now, don't blow it. <laughs> what was it that smells so good? Is it the food of this I place? I think they were just talking about the food, honestly. Okay. They didn't have food arrive yet, though, I don't think. I guess no. it was just in the air. Dude, this this movie, man. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be a lot of that. I, I like these quizzes, though. Uh, so mom and dad get distracted. Uh, dad, I don't even know what the hell he's doing. But well, mom, he like steps outside to go make maybe a phone use call. a phone call. Yeah. 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 He's got to check up on work. Mom has the, the, the evil waitress spill coffee on her. And then so she goes to the bathroom. And while the kids are alone, the camera work just goes crazy. The music goes crazy. They're focusing in on people's gross looking food that they're churning around on their plates. Yeah. Everything just goes bonkers. The, it, the, what was most notable for me here is the audio special effects of the like slobbering townsfolk. Yeah. It, it reminds me of uh, not an audio audio visual uh, reference, but it, it reminds me of the scene in James Joyce's Ulysses, the chapter where the men, uh, it's, it's I think it's the Circe chapter where yes! the men sort of turn into pigs and they're just like eating disgustingly. It's exactly like you, that. You know what it is? You know what it is? It reminds me of it reminds me of the chapter that, that goes from like the origins of english <laughs> and goes up through like poetry and like yeah. iambic pentameter it's also unpleasant <laughs> to sit through just like that chapter of ulysses yeah that one's the toughest one yeah, yeah brother well during this uh um uh george buck flower comes up and wanders over just sort of nonchalantly shambles over and fondles i guess this must be roxanne's hair yep and then she just lets him do it. <laughs> and then she gets like traumatized and this like comes back to haunt her later this moment. Oh, um, no, they don't really think or talk about it after that. No, no, no. She, well, no, she sees him again in the mirror uh, later stroking her hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. I forgot so, about yeah, that. This is about yeah. trauma, dude. But like, th- I guess what I mean is this. they don't say anything in the moment or to their parents when they return within the nope. same scene. It's just like, well these things happen in small towns yeah i don't think they ever broach the subject with the parents about how fucking weird this town is not that i remember i mean here's the thing they're very resourceful parents just don't understand so (laughs) why bother (laughs) when a couple of guys were up to no good started making trouble in my neighborhood got in one little fight my mom got scared says you're moving with your auntie and uncle in bel-air crisscross make you want to jump jump crisscross applesauce OPP, you know me. So uh, they leave the diner, song, find food at Millie's, and yes. uh, Dad and George Buckflower get into a car kicking off. Oh my God! So they want to get his. This is the best fucking shit ever. <laughs> they're sitting right next to him. They're literally they're like one car length sideways, not even a full length car between the two vehicles. Yeah. And in order to get Ed's attention, Dad starts blaring his horn. Mm. Doesn't roll down the window and say hello. So George kicks his tire and then Tad jumps out and like, oh yeah, you like that? What if I kick that? And that's when George calls out old Blue, who's been there the whole time. Yeah. Um, who he's been talking to because it's his only friend. It is a yep. taxidermied dog <laughs> uh, with that just has its head sticking out of the window of his, his like, his terrible little jalopy. Yeah. Oh, man, this would be so charming if it was in a different movie. It's it's even more charming when uh, George starts, like, gnashing his teeth, pretending to be his own dead dog. Yes. <laughs> I think they're in Twin Peaks. I mean, yes, this very much feels like that, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's mm-hmm. that sort of weird sort of nightmarish stuff mixed with the broad, almost slapstick comedy. <clears throat> yeah. Simon, you need to watch this one. Uh, <laughs> Yes. Uh, Sam, the sheriff, shows up, who's an actor who played nothing and nothing else. Mm. And uh, he intervenes, and we're going to see a lot of Sam later when he and uh, (laughs) someone have a a little 
Trist. Do we I'm see just... any of it? Does he even take his shirt off? I don't think he does. I think he does. We get to see the sides of his shoulders, which is the most erotic portion of any human being. So he, okay, so it's it's definitely Roxanne who he. Yes, the it was it is okay. not the sister. The sister does not okay. end up with the sheriff. Okay, then I think. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I'm... We could both be wrong. We could both. I be talking one about two them. different films one this anyway the, the important part is that he's like 45 years old <laughs> yes uh, <laughs> but he's the youngest guy in town <laughs> i mean yes that is actually true they make note of that oh boy a uh, little detail to keep in mind um he does uh, diffuse the situation by saying that uh george's whole family was killed in a car accident he has a metal plate in his head now so he doesn't like mm. uh loud sounds like a horn beeping mm. uh he also has quote, quote unquote the eyes of a child oh <laughs> no the metal plate is why the tommy knockers can't get him Ooh, ooh, there you go it's, it's a feature not a bug <laughs> same so they finally get to the cabin where they're gonna stay and larry and brant almost get into a fight over who's gonna have the bed because brant just is so sick of Larry's shit that he just prefaces it with like, look, dude, I'm going to kick your ass. You're not taking my bed. That big, nice, comfy bed is mine. Da, 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 da. And then Larry goes completely batshit crazy, pulls out a butterfly knife, which he whips around, which is pretty much all they're good for. And then freaking puts the knife to his throat and is like, I'm going to cut you, motherfucker. I'll cut you. It's great. I, and then he's like, like, just kidding. That is the moment that made me fall in love with Leary when he's like, just kidding. Yeah. Oh my God. I love which, that which I mean, I think he actually does sell in the performance. Like, no, he was not just kidding. He's going to fucking kill his best friend over this stupid bed. Yes. What are you doing? What do you mean, dude? I mean, what are you doing on my bed, dude? Come on, Brent. I found it first. I'll tell you what. I'll flip you for it. Larry, look. Alright, don't fuck with me. I mean, you're always starting this shit, and I'm gonna kick your ass this time. Don't fuck around, man! I'll cut you so fucking fast, you never seen it coming, motherfucker! Hey, relax, man. I was just kidding. Go ahead, take the bed. No, no, that's okay. You take the bed. Oh, here's another weird scene where uh, Brent just says, uh, it's very crude, uh, so I won't totally say it. Uh, Well, I'll change it. I'll make it a a, a PG-13. Please do. Ain't seen much in the way of kitty cat in town. (laughs) Meow. And right after this, Larry spots a woman running for her life from the pastor, or the man in black, in the woods, and that's it they don't comment upon it the scene cuts to something else nope they they he tries to convince him he saw something oh okay yeah fuck that we need to get to polka night (laughs) be there or be square as the sign says man i love this when they get to polka night dad mom bust out of their like overcoats because you know it's cold this is a snowy place they bust out of their coats and he's wearing full-on Freaking Lederhosen. <laughs> She's got on like a like a dress that like fits in perfectly with Polka Night. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, before we forget, this is a secret Christmas movie. Is it? All of the decorations on the windows at the diner all say Merry Christmas. Oh wow! It's decked out. I just remember that. So there you go, Perfect. folks. Put Perfect. that in your bong and take a toke on it. Put that in your bonnet and keep it safe. If y'all are speaking my bongwage. Light up a single individual doobie right now. Uh, so, I love the Lederhosen. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, Brant. Oh, my God. Brant goes to pee. As you do. They, the, he and Larry uh, well, agree he, the music sucks. He drank too much hot chalky and now you gotta go pee. <laughs> gotta go wee wee. He goes to the bathroom and the fucking most amazing shit. This dude just stares at his dick for the entire sequence. 
plaids. Yeah, this this older man in plaid, like middle aged oh. man in plaid, just follows him in and <laughs> st- like just sidles up to the urinal. Does not start doing any like peeing business himself. Just stands there <laughs> and is looking down at Brent's crotch with raised <laughs> eyebrows. While the scene is the scene cuts back to like pull the stuff, but then it comes back and Brent is so uncomfortable he goes into one of the stalls. But the man immediately follows him. <laughs> It oh. just stands outside the locked door. Um, Holy shit. It's honestly a pretty unnerving scene. You know, I think it cuts to the uh, the essence of the of the sometimes uh, uncomfortable atmosphere of men's yep. bathrooms. If you're trying to lose a few pounds and butter is out, you're going to love this. Molly McButter. Now you can shake on the taste of butter for just four calories. Molly McButter. New Molly McButter natural butter flavor sprinkles. The taste of real butter with only four calories per serving. A very wholesome 100% natural four little calories. So indulge yourself. Molly McButter. You've got Molly now. So Larry saves the day because the guy kicks open the door, which bloodies uh, freaking Brant's nose. Larry tackles the guy. They fight. He's about to get murdered. Larry is about to get strangled to death. And Brant kills the guy with the toilet tank cover. And I wrote in my notes, seriously, what is this movie? Yeah. What is going on in this fucking movie? Well, Meanwhile, Sam, the cop, and his 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 buddy the the greasy guy take Roxanne and Bridget and go off to a strip club. Well, that's how you schmooze them. They go off to the Bang Bang Bar, wine and dine, the bada bing. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I, I gotta I gotta go back a little bit because uh, the 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 order of events in this um, this scene the sequence I'm gonna call it because it's more ambitious than a scene when Larry saves him is bizarre because it all happens like within an instant, this man forces open the stall door and it knocks Brent on his ass into the turlet water. Yes. Real gross. But then Larry is just there immediately jumping on the guy's back. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, I guess somehow Brent got a bloody nose there, but at the end I of think it, the door hit him. They jump to the conclusion. Somebody's trying to kill us, man. That is not the conclusion that I would jump to based upon what he just experienced in uh, in this bathroom. <laughs> Someone is trying to uh, to I don't know hook up in the bathroom maybe, but kill you? Uh, it, I don't whoa! Know. I I, don't I just know. don't know. I just um, don't know what's happening. Dad also at, at the <laughs> once once Larry and Brent leave the uh, uh, the head as they call it the bathroom. Yes, uh, they are polka mosh pitted. Yes. And dad says, they're slam dancing, honey. And the mom says, how cute. It is weird. They, they're trying to leave and they can't. But instead of like focusing on it, like showing like this weird, like artsy scene of them, like a, like a darkly comic thing, like in an in a artsy movie where they would show them trying to leave and like yeah. the film of their uncomfortable faces and sweating and like getting bloody. No. They just literally show them having difficulty leaving, make a joke about it, and then we move on. It's so weird. So they want to go find the girls. So they yes. go, like, well, there, there can't be that many places in this town. Let's no. go to the strip club. <laughs> At the strip club, I'm going to play this commercial because I'm very curious. I was wondering what Matilda Bay is. Apparently, Matilda Bay is a wine cooler. But then the slow motion <sighs> takes it over. Okay. This is fucking weird so strange all through so brent and larry are standing outside of the strip club because they just decided not to go walk in the door i guess they are miming banging on the windows of the strip club trying to get the attention of their sister and friend right yeah and i guess maybe the sheriff well no they don't seem to like ever want to talk to the sheriff Okay, so problem here. Number one, why are they simply miming banging on the windows rather than actually bu- banging on the windows? Or going inside. Or going inside. Number two, what kind of strip club has windows? <laughs> yes. The, and then, the other weird thing is, that, well, they're trying to save them because the sister and her friend are sitting there and Greasy and Sam the sheriff are walking towards them with a broken bottle because they were just bro- breaking up a fight 
these two guys were fighting in front of the um, jukebox because one guy claimed he knew some famous guy, and then he admits that he only saw him on TV, and that inspired this fight. Mm. So they okay. break up the fight, and they have this broken bottle. They're walking towards the girls, and then it's just like the most punishing slow mo yeah. ever. <laughs> you could pause the VCR, and it would, it would be faster than this slow motion. I was watching this at like one point, like two speed, and it was still very slow. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! Wait a minute. What do you mean? You watch these movies like on fast forward? Uh, when I'm taking notes, yeah. Oh, so you'd seen it before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't. Geez. I don't want to hear it. And you don't ever tell me you do that again. I don't like that. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> I watch this shit in real time, motherfucker. Next that's time, your that's your mistake. Next time you and I will watch everything at 0.75 speed. <laughs> we'll slow it. We'll watch everything. Slow it down. Or in the case of this movie, 0. 0.0001 speed. Listen, I'm a thorough preparer, and sometimes that means you gotta cut corners. Alright. I am a thoroughbred horsey. <laughs> so <clears throat> there's a guy. Coming after uh, a man with a baseball bat or just a rake or something. I don't know what. But he's going to kill um, good old Larry and Brant. And then <laughs> he gets beheaded. He gets beheaded by uh, by Ed. Our, 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 turns out he's a hero of the movie. This is and, George Buckflower we're talking yes. about. I don't think we've actually said his name. Yeah, uh, he's he's Ed. And uh, the head goes flying through the air and lands on some spikes and smiles at the girls. <laughs> yeah, okay, so, whoa, it's so confusing. Where are these spikes? I don't know. What are no these idea. spikes? But they did what? a reverse shot where they, they had the head on these spikes and then whipped it away with the strings <sighs> and then just ran it backwards so it looks like it really awkwardly lands on the spikes. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Well, the girls, the girls see this, they run away into the forest, and they bump into the boys who are also in the forest. <clears throat> then you would think something would happen there, but nope. Uh, we just, they, they talk for a minute, and then we cut to the morning after. Where um, we get the most important scene <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> the, the audio from this, the audio from this will be at the beginning of the episode, I guarantee <laughs> you. Uh, this is uh, Larry's little stiffy. Yeah. <laughs> That is what Dad oh. says when he is going in to wake them up in the morning. As if this movie needed to be weirder tonally. <laughs> so Larry is pointing out, as we've sort of oh. gotten the idea, that there's no kids in town. Uh, the man in black, the pastor, shows up to give Larry back his knife, which I guess he dropped at some mm. point. Uh, yes. though, he, though he didn't use it. Um, what else Dad falls happens? apart. Oh yeah, Dad falls apart. That's a good scene. So uh, you know, dad wants them to shovel snow. And as he's talking to his son, this disgusting amount of snot, this, it just goes body horror for no reason. Like snot, snot, snot pouring out of his face. Like this impossible amount of snot is pouring out of his face. And then his fucking ear comes off. Well, we get a good visual pun at the beginning where he, Brent says, spit it out, dad. And he says, sure, son. And then he spits out a tooth. <laughs> that was so weird. This movie, this movie, man, because I can take weird, obviously, and I can take stupid like parodies of horror films and I can take like artsy stuff. When you put all three of them together, <laughs> yeah. it just your my mind just doesn't know what to do. This is very, very, very. So, yeah, <sighs> because in any other movie, you would see a scene like this where, you know, his dad starts bleeding from the top of his head. Yep. While he's sitting there talking normally, be like, oh, this is like a weird dream nightmare scene. But the, when you're watching this movie, you think, it's just really happening, I guess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, or establish that Brant has hallucinations. That's the way they could have played right. this. They could have played it like society, where you see all these hallucinations, right. and then you, it turns out that, holy shit, this shit's happening. And that's so. kind of how they want to play this. They have it be right. just like, you know, Brant's vision hallucination but we don't know why like what's causing it yep yeah and it doesn't recur it doesn't no, come back no. you know so larry and brant are shoveling snow as they're, they're they're supposed to shovel this really long driveway as part of their vacation and uh, they get into a shovel fight 
they're arguing over God knows what, and they start fighting as Larry's a little bit of a spitfire there. It goes a little fucking crazy again, and they're fighting. And that's when Ed, uh, Buck Flower guy, shows up. Mm-hmm. And uh, in, I'm about <laughs> to fall asleep. In the okay, this is my first viewing. Last night was my first viewing, and as soon as we get a flashback <laughs> to what happens, quote unquote, to uh, Ed's family, I the next thing I know, there's people bleeding. There's the camera has fallen over sideways, and we're watching someone get murdered. And Lietta goes, "Are you asleep?" And I'm like, "Yes." I sat up, and I only missed like a couple minutes. But what the fuck? So, yeah, the movie when Ed George Buckflower tells his story to the boys, it turns into a Super 8 home movie. It's like Sinister Part 2. Yeah, it is, actually. Just like that. <laughs> um, or it's like a chill wave music video. Um, yeah. <laughs> like, it's very, it's supremely chill. It's, it's very, it's more slow motion, right? That's why I fell asleep. And, and the score is, like, droning. Um, it is bizarre, downright oh, bizarre, and the act, like we don't. I, I'm very confused about the about everything that's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, but like the, I guess the perspective is like he's holding the camera, you know, George Buckflower, and then we're seeing his family being murdered, but we don't really know by whom or I'll why. I'll tell you what. You know what it feels like. It feels like the director had. His, this is a home movie he made. Like it's a uh, like he wanted to shoot like a uh, a found footage style movie back in the eighties. For sure, yeah. yeah it, it feels just, like a short film, exactly. Or just like some test footage because the dog in it is not the, not his dog. <laughs> it's a different dog. It's like a, it's like a golden retriever. Yeah, oh, it's so Lord. weird. Like, do we do we know any of the actors in this scene? Are they people who are not in the movie otherwise? Ooh, that's a good question. It's hard to tell because the the footage is so shaky, but I was wondering no, if any of them... None, none of them are credited as anything. Okay. it's Oh, uh, no, wait, I'm sorry. Yes, so Ellen Simpson, his wife, and Eric Simpson, his son, and Eve Simpson. So, yeah, these people are actually okay. credited. That's, okay. Oh, my God. That's, that's bizarre, yeah. Okay, so that happens. Um, <laughs> and then the villagers come out of the woods to shoot george buck flower in the yep. scalp not in the head but in the scalp yes uh, <laughs> so and then the we boys... cut oh yeah yeah this is good because the girls are walking and chatting in the woods about nothing of importance yes. and they run into the breastfeeding couple from the opening of the movie yep who are lovingly wiping barbecue chicken wing sauce into each other's faces I guess are they supposed to be eating the baby? Yes, they're supposed okay. to be eating the baby because they find the, the they're doing this is the best thing ever. They're doing snow angels in a fucking graveyard, <laughs> which yeah. is like that would be a great reveal in a, like a really dark comedy where these two friends are doing snow angels and it pans out and they're in the middle of a graveyard. Perfect, but they find a baby doll, like literally a doll, not a fake uh-huh. baby, a doll. Yeah. And they freak out and they run. That's when they see the lady and her husband, presumably her husband, eating the child. And uh-huh. yeah, so barbecue sauce. That's great. Wait, Delicious. but is the doll supposed to be the actual baby? They react to it like it was the dead. <laughs> Seriously. Because you, you don't give like an infant a baby doll. They can't play with it yet. No. Nope. Yep. Oh, man, that's weird. <sighs> so it cuts back to Larry and <laughs> Brant burying the dead Ed, and they use Old Blue as the marker, uh, as, as a grave <laughs> marker, which actually has a great joke that pays off later. I was really surprised. That made me laugh out loud later. Then the truck ride happens, so yeah. the, the girls sneak onto the back of a truck filled with hay, mm-hmm. and they go for a ride, and they're just talking, and like, not cuddling, but like, you know, like friends would just like stare into each other's eyes while they're talking like you and I have done on many occasions yeah. in the hay rides. Mm-hmm. And it's, it, and then it's such a, another scene that my brain cannot comprehend because it turns into this sweet, but you know, tinged with a little strangeness of them riding off into the, the fa- the fading light of the day and the car that they're filming, like the car that the camera is attached to, starts to slow down, and the scene is fading to black, and the car is slowing down, and pretty soon the girls are out of sight, 
and it cuts to black. And I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck? It's the end of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. They got it out. They got it out. Well, they then are attacked by, like, Evil Dead attacked by ropes and hands that just yep. pop out of the hay. Yeah, the so, chains and stuff. It's yeah. so weird. God, I mean, I think I'm just, I think I need to stop saying so weird because that's my, that's all I know. I don't know what to say anymore. Well, the, the teens do broken. all get back together at one point soon yes, after at this. Ed's house. And they, they say, or, like, I, th- one, I think maybe it's Larry says, uh, I'm starting to think this is an adolescent paranoid fantasy. <laughs> Which, yeah, that might be the best way to sum this up. <laughs> they, so they're at a hotel, and one room is uh, Ed's room where he lives, and the room next door, dun dun dun, is the killer pastor's room, Uh-oh. where he's got this woman, the woman we saw earlier being chased around, actually uh, strung up in the bathroom. The boys get philosophical, and it's the the... Everything is so weird. Then they find the pamphlet and they're reading the pamphlet that shows like, oh, get rid of your children and be free and life is good. If the tape wasn't so warped at this point in the movie, mm. I could have paused it and actually read what the pamphlet really says. Yeah. But we get the we get the tracking problems and the sound warping and like my brain is being squished into 50 million fucking pieces. Huh. That now the movie's starting to make sense, right? Yeah, dude. We get it. It's all it's all coming together. Yeah, dude. That's a good movie. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> they decide this is the turning point of the movie here where the kids decide to stop being kids. They decide to grow up. Mm-hmm. To instead of trying to beat the adults, they decide to join them. To be the adults. Yes, don't beat yeah. be. And this, I love this whole thing. Like now they, the girls dress up like, like, like proper young ladies to go back to the bar, the, the old hoedown. Frickin' Brant puts on a, uh, a poncho, draws a little mustache on his lip, <laughs> and he's going to go and pretend to be the musician that, mm-hmm. that they're waiting on. He's, he's going to be the guitarist because he has his heavy metal guitar he's going to whip out. And then frickin' Larry dresses like the preacher this quartet of weirdos is so amazing the girl's plans aren't as good basically roxanne's plan is to fuck the sheriff Mm -hmm. and bridget's plan is to murder the greasy guy Mm -hmm. wonderful oh before i forget the joke was with the dog mom and dad are driving past where they buried ed under and put the dog as his gravestone and they it's because it's covered with snow they think it's a an, a snow dog like a mm-hmm. snowman mm-hmm. i've never mm-hmm. seen one in that shape before mm-hmm. that made me laugh out loud that actually <laughs> made me laugh out loud <laughs> they're, so, they're simple simple parents so we go to the bar where we have our our little uh showdowns of sorts mm-hmm <sighs> where Larry starts drinking with the pastor, the evil pastor. Brant starts playing heavy metal guitar. Uh, frickin' what's her face has sex with the sheriff, and then the other girl shoots good old uh, greasy guy with a shotgun. She actually gives him a choice when she points the shotgun in his head. She says, "Pick a window." <laughs> Which windows That's his brains are going to go flying out of? Actually, pretty cool. Yeah, no, and this is the best part of the movie. The movie, for me, was like spiraling out of control, but this shit at the end, they brought it. Like, they actually mm-hmm. brought the weirdness. Yeah. Oh, especially when uh, Larry takes on the freaking. They go to the church and he fights with the pastor and wins. Uh, honestly, now, Jeffrey, you know. I am a sexy guy who likes to watch sexy movies. Oh, yeah. When he pinned the pastor guy on the floor and you couldn't see what Larry was doing (laughs) and he was stabbing. I think this was intentionally meant to be funny. He's stabbing the guy to death, but he looks like he's being stabbed somewhere else. Like he looks shocked in it. Yeah. (laughs) His eyes are like rolling in the back of his head. He's going, ooh. (laughs) I'm so glad you saw that too. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this movie, dude. Uh, uh, 
so then uh some shit happens my notes have stopped already oh well so. we have the the best uh well the second best i i do like the car death the, the best but the the last one is um well because uh brent had gone electric at the polka dance and really upset the old people yes Right. Yes. And so he's standing outside and who comes up to confront him but the waitress with the hot chocolate. And she says, what the hell was that shit, boy? And Brett responds, that was rock and roll. <laughs> what the hell was that shit, boy? That is rock and roll, bitch. Uh, and the waitress hates young people and new <sighs> ideas. And she holds a gun up to Brent, but he manages to cap her first shooting her right in the forehead which is funny because she shoots him first but misses because the idea was i thought she shot first and then of course he blows her away but man what a statement well i mean she is shooting him from three feet away there's no reason she should have missed (laughs) i know Uh, but he let he falls down like he got shot it's a fake out yeah yeah yeah. but man what a statement Mm. can we talk about brant some more can we talk about this actor some more he's like Oh my god, he's like a freaking cardboard, like a dirty cardboard box, like glued together in the shape of Johnny Depp around this era. <laughs> what the fuck? I, and he delivers lines like fucking eating a pizza. Like he's like he's <laughs> God, I, I love would describe this kid. him as stoic. Yeah, he's <laughs> he um, stoic. Well, I mean, I'll say that he ran the risk. Uh, I don't know why the di- the director and the the uh, uh, the scene decorator allowed this to happen, but he was nearly upstaged by that Mel Gibson cardboard standee in the earliest <laughs> scene of the film. Yeah, yeah, he's he's an interesting, an interesting fellow for sure. What the fuck, um, Larry? Larry just runs circles around him. I just love Larry. He does. So he really does. He becomes sort of the star. So the next day, uh, the parents uh, wake, rise and shine, and leave for home by themselves. And I guess we are supposed to either believe that they were trying to get rid of the kids, or they just sort of got sucked into the weird, you know, brain hypnosis of this town and don't remember that they have kids to bring with them. But they leave without their kids, and they seem perfectly happy. Yep. Yep. Our final scene is at the diner where we see that Brent is the sheriff now, right? Larry is the pastor. Mm -hmm. One of the girls is the waitress and the other is, I don't know, somebody. (laughs) Uh, But that does make me wonder what happened to the sheriff. Yeah, they don't, they don't, uh, she had sex with him. She's, she, she took away his male power. Oh, do you absorb him when you do that? Yeah. Okay. So they are the adults now, right? Uh, oh boy. And credits. We're done. Uh, <laughs> uh, as as the credits roll, we get a, uh, a Randy Oldman song playing. Yep. Not Randy Newman, but Randy Oldman. <laughs> I, I was trying there. It didn't really work. That's okay. <laughs> Close That's enough. our film. That's our film. Did you did you scream? Ah. Uh... I'm just going to go first and talk about how we like this, if that's okay with you. Go ahead. I got something to say. Oh, boy. This was 85 minutes that felt like 210 minutes. <laughs> this, and it, a lot of it, honestly, has to do with the, the the quality of the copy we've scored of this fucking movie that yeah. sounds like we made it up. <laughs> this is a real movie. This was taxing to sit through. Uh, had I not been taking notes, that would have helped, too. This I wrote in my notes, watching this made my face hurt. <laughs> I love the tone, whatever it is. I love the message, whatever it's supposed to be. Uh, it's jaw-droppingly insane, confusing as fuck. Um, it reminded me of Horror House on Highway 5, hmm. an- another movie with terrible tone problems. Mm-hmm. Uh, although not related at all. Just it just it That's the only thing I could think of. I asked you, because I couldn't remember what movies, what titles of any movies were. 
I was like, how did you find a film weirder than Runaway Nightmare? <laughs> uh, but this doesn't feel like it took years to finish. This feels like it took minutes. <laughs> This was shot in real time. <laughs> I mean, you're assuming that it's finished. <laughs> oh, hey, we'll see. I wrote some some things I thought inspired this film. Uh, definitely David Lynch inspired these guys. John Waters, I think, inspired these guys. Mm. Like like polyester, maybe. Mm. Uh, uh, yes, National Lampoons, like we discussed earlier. <laughs> but then, somewhere along the way, Roberta Findlay stepped in to be their muse <laughs> I, I but it, that might just be because i watched primeval again for the <laughs> first time in a long time right before this i like this movie i would actually watch it if it gets a proper release someday yeah i i would never watch this copy again this oh. abysmal vhs rip how about you? Well, here's here's hoping that it does receive Seriously, the yeah. release it deserves um totally. I mean, I think that it would it would definitely help. I, I do think that there is like an actual movie here with like an interesting sort of weird and surreal idea. Um, and I think it is sort of lost a little bit in the very, very poor quality of the of the of the transfer. I like it a lot. Um, nice. I'm a big fan of this one. It feels so arbitrary and inexplicable and tonal whiplash. Uh, I love that. And it's also, you know, at the same time as it's so bonkers, it's so sleepy too, uh, which I love. I love those sort of sleepy, uh, somewhat hallucinogenic movies, which this one does. It pretty regularly features a scene that just kind of blows your mind. I mean, the Super 8 home movie is when that happened the first time I watched, it, I think like my jaw dropped. I was like, what is <laughs> happening? Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of this one. I stand for it. I hope that it does receive that release in some form or another, or that somebody listed on eBay and I can just buy my own VHS copy. I'll be happy with either result, but I think more people should see this for sure. Um, I think most people will hate it, and uh, that's good. I think I think they should. <laughs> nice. I'm seriously considering making my own t-shirt. This is Octong Kmart Shoppers. <laughs> <I've>... <laughs> any any handwriting will be better than his. Yeah. That's glorious. Yeah, it looked like he made it with shoe polish and his yes. freaking hand. Yes. Classic. Oh, he just, he, you know what? He looks like he smells like shoe polish. <laughs> and tastes like it. Ooh. Ooh. <sighs> well, Jeffrey, thank you for picking this. Uh, I don't know if I picked it. I told you I watched it and that it was great. And I think you just added it to our list. So I'm going to blame you. you know, <laughs> here we go again. We can never figure out who's responsible. But I'll take credit. Show. I'll take credit. It's a great Please movie. Do. I love it. Anytime you love it, I get scared now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know why you would, uh, <laughs> why you would agreed to this. <laughs> it always comes back to being my fault. Mm, yep. Uh... <laughs> So, uh, folks, thanks for listening. Please scream only in American if you can. Yes. Uh, get your hot chalky. Did you say hot? Did you say hot topic? Hot. Ch- <laughs> get your hot chalky. Go to the hot topic. <laughs> hot topic. Land of the free. Hot topic for you and me. Hello, This is the Doom Show is a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Please check out the other podcasts on legionpodcasts.com. If you'd like more Hello, This is the Doom Show, go to hellodoomshow.podomatic.com or go to doomedmoviethon.com for the archives. If that's still not enough, go to at doomedmoviethon on Twitter. You can write in to Hello, This is the Doom Show. Use the email doomedmoviethon at gmail.com. Doom Show episodes are available on record and 8-track cassette. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcasts, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Go Show, 
Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. The Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.